Hey y'all, it's Arwen, the professional joy seeker and the Barbara Walters wannabe of YouTube. I'm also a professional tarot consultant, but today I am doing a chat with somebody who is really way up there on my most requested list. Uh, people kept saying, talk to Katie, talk to Katie. So now you know it's Katie, and it is Katie Flowers, so I know a lot of people are going to be super excited about that. She is from Australia, so y'all will have to forgive me for going, Hoo -hoo. I love accents. Um, and it doesn't really matter what accent. It's, if it's different from mine, I like it. So everybody say hi to Katie, and Katie, say hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm Katie, and I have a little YouTube here on, I uh, have a little YouTube, I have a little channel here on YouTube as well. Yeah, it's good fun. Right, a little YouTube, my ass. Uh, <laughs> I told Katie that I, I cuss a lot. Y'all, I can't find the video yet. I know it should be here, um, but I'm still looking for it so that I can um, tune in to the, the live chat. Oh, my God, where to go? Well, I may not be able to see it. Um, if anybody has me, has a super urgent question and we don't see it, I'll see if Katie will come back and we'll ask her then. So, right. Katie, are you ready for mm -hmm. the 13 things I want to know about you? Is it 13, though? No. no. <laughs> I can't <laughs> count, so it's more like 15. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm ready, though. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Damn it, she's been watching, I can tell. Um, so the very first thing is, what I want to know is the first thing you can remember about witches or witch in general was it a cartoon a book a person i mean how did you learn about witches um i think for me it was probably like the disney films um i was really into snow white when i was little but i don't really remember thinking of them as witches i more just remember thinking of them as like evil like the evil people in the show um and then wizard of oz but again i thought glinda was a fairy more than she was a witch and then I was really into Harry Potter, but I didn't really think of them as witches and wizards either. I thought of them as kids like me. I don't know. So they were kind of throughout when I was growing up, but just I didn't really think of them a whole lot. I didn't think witches were real, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think it was a hope for me. Uh, but my yeah. first my first witch that I can remember really keying into was Witch Hazel from Bugs Bunny. Oh, okay. I never watched that. Well, she's just a silly witch, and she's always trying to catch and eat bugs. Um, <laughs> or bugs Bunny, not Bugs, Bugs. Oh, right. oh there okay. we are. I found us. Whew, that was hard. Um, okay, hi, folks. Sorry about that. Didn't... Now I've got the chat up, so we're good. So how did you come to the craft? What made you decide to be a practitioner or what made you, I'm assuming now that this is the other thing I keep forgetting to ask people before we started. Mm. Are you pagan? So you may not be. I'm pagan, but I don't really identify as a witch. Um, I know there's aspects of what I do. That's a bit witchy, but I don't think the entirety of my practice is super witchcraft, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. But how I came to paganism, do you want to know that? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, it's a little bit, you know how people talk of post-traumatic growth? I don't know. I think that's kind of what it was for me. Um, I was an alcoholic and I was pretty messed up. <laughs> um, and then I just stopped drinking and I've been sober for four years. Um, yeah. <laughs> but without the alcohol, um, I didn't really have any coping mechanisms. So after that, I went through some pretty hard times. I was in hospital a few times. Um, and I think I was just out in nature. We were camping. And I remember just sitting on the hill as the sun was setting and thinking, I don't have to be drunk for things to be beautiful and lovely. I don't know. It was just this really weird moment of clarity. Um, and so when I came home, I was just, I needed to feel that more. I needed to feel connected and grounded and for beauty. Um, and so then yeah. I just started looking and then I found paganism. And so that's paganism for me. A lot of it is chasing that feeling of connectedness and awe and wonder and beauty. Yeah. So that's, that's me. Beautiful. That is, that's yeah. a really empowering story. And I hope mm. that people that watch this get that, that, that idea that there are other ways to deal with 
we all, I mean, there's crap in the world, y'all. There is some yeah. pain <laughs> and some ugly shit. Big time. And I love yeah. what, what you said, Katie, because it's really, I had a similar experience. I was actually a Wiccan. I was actually a, a degreed Wiccan and was having a super hard time with a breakup. I mean, I was thinking suicide. I was thinking, this ain't it, kid. I got to go. And I remember standing on the shore. I was at a Gulf Shore Women's Festival, actually. I stood on the shore and felt the wind hitting me, just like whipping through me. And I thought, this is this is what I need. I need to clear myself out, fill myself up with this wind, and become me again. And it was kind yeah. of like a coming home feeling, like, mm. you know, smack upside the head from the lady for me. You said, you know, you need to stop this shit, babe. Um, <laughs> so the lady that I was with at that point was uh, pretty uh, specific about her, her wishes. She would just whop you upside the head with two by four. Um, <laughs> but I really liked it. I really liked it. I'm very, very grateful that uh, that happened for you. Cause I think that mm. otherwise I wouldn't have met you. So yeah. 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 No, it's been great for me. Super. Um, we got a whole bunch of people in with us. Yay. Hi guys. Have fun. Hello. <laughs> Just wave at them. Um, yeah. So what's your favorite form of divination? I think I might know. Tarot. Yeah. Tarot. <laughs> I adore the tarot. Um, and I don't know, you might have seen I use tarot for a lot of stuff. Um I use it for divination and fun stuff like that. But a big part of it for me is my mental health and maintaining it. Um, so that's why I started my little therapeutic tarot series, which is all about me sharing how I do that. Um, yeah, so it kind of works both ways for me. It's a supportive tool of healing and wellness maintenance, um, but then it's also fun for divination and stuff like that too. Yeah. Yeah, so now what deck are you using right now? You did my tarot tag, right? Am I remembering correctly? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, and I can't remember um, what deck you said. Were you with the were you the world spirit? Yes, yes. That was my primary reading deck for many years. Yeah. Uh, yeah true no, story. Was I was I was going to teach a, a class at a conference at a con in Denver, Colorado when I lived there. I couldn't find my world spirit tarot. Could not <laughs> find it anywhere. No, and I mean I had other decks, but mm. at that point I wasn't a huge collector. I might have had five or six decks, maybe ten. Um, oh God, have I really collected that many decks in that short of a time? <laughs> but I told my partner at the time. I told her, I said, "You have got to go." I said, "Go to Herbs and Arts. Go to Isis. Go to uh, Spiritwise." We had a, but we Denver was blessed with uh witchy woo woo bookstores i said and you find that deck and find bring it, it to find me it. <laughs> and she comes i mean like wheeling in at five till and tosses the deck at me and i'm literally unwrapping it as people are coming into the class but i knew it so well yeah and, and i love that it's it's multicultural it really mm. reaches out across the oh look a white person yeah. field of vision no, I really appreciate that about it too. And also just the different body types as well. Um, yeah. It's beautiful. It feels like, I think I said in my video, it feels like a celebration of the human experience. It's very earthy and fiery. I just think it's it's such a beautiful deck. Do you have the new one that she uh, did the Kickstarter for? No, no. I saw that and I liked it, but to me it was a bit too saturated. Um, so I knew that if I wanted to get it, I would get the Llewellyn, the old one. And I found it on eBay um, at the end awesome. of last year. And I got it. I was the only person who bid. Don't you love that? Yeah. So Yeah, I actually have, um, I'm looking up on my shelves, but I've got boxes and boxes of, uh, here, I'll <laughs> see if I can do my little camera. I have a new camera. You see the white boxes up there and then the white boxes down there? Yes, yes. Those are all tarot decks. <laughs> and I have at least three, maybe four of the little sets yeah, that's what I have. I love the little book that comes with it. Me too. I think that I mean, actually she and I were talking about getting her on here to do a um, an interview, and then she had an illness in the family. I need to get back mm. in touch with her because that would be a yeah. fun, fun I love that. interview. Yeah. So have you ever done a working that backfired? Um, 
I don't know about backfired, but I've had a few, I think other people say this, don't they? A few that just ended up not being what they expected. Yeah. Um, and I think a really, really big one for me was, so after a, my overdose and I was in hospital for a while, I had to leave law, law school, obviously. Um, and I did a little bit of an intention setting and manifestation for going back to law school. Um, and I got really sick again um, <laughs> because I think at the end of the day, I just, I hadn't let my lesson that law was not for me. Um, and I think a big part of what happened to me and everything that I went through was it was like a tower. It was throwing me off that course that I was on. Yeah. I was on the wrong course and <laughs> I was trying to get back on it. <laughs> and the universe was just like, bitch, you haven't learnt your lesson. This is not <laughs> the right way. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. That was that was my big one, I think. Yeah, I, yeah and that's an interesting. I, I don't think I've talked about that specific thing with anybody about the fact that sometimes you know the universe says, "Um, you may think this is yeah. what you want, but you really want this thing way over here, and we're gonna mm -hmm. have to drag you there, kicking and screaming, yeah. and it may hurt." <laughs> yeah, that was exactly it for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I'm like, just seeing if anybody's actually asked a question here. Somebody says they're eating their lunch. Oh, Nathan, who I just did an interview with. Now, I have to ask you, do I sound loud? Because I sound loud to myself. Um, Sounds perfect for me. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> now, the next question is a Southwest question, but I have learned that now what did somebody tell me that I had to ask in Australia? It wasn't ketchup or barbecue sauce. Oh, crud. Tomato sauce or barbecue sauce? That's it. That's it. Yeah. What's your yeah. choice? Tomato. I love tomato sauce. Yeah. Now, tell me, is it is it like ketchup? Ketchup here is a tomato sauce, tomato sauce. Listen, man, I'm speaking Australian already. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but it's got vinegar. It's just kind of a sweet. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say that tomato sauce and ketchup are the same, but when I went to America, the ketchup sauce, it was similar, but it did taste a little bit different. Um, and then when I came back, I think, because Australia is becoming more Americanized, um, you know, a lot of what we watch on telly is American and stuff like that. Um, I'm sorry. And we've even picked up some of your words, like take out and trash. Like we didn't used to say that sort of stuff. Um, but anyway, <laughs> tomato and ketchup. <laughs> um, uh, I bought... I think Master Foods has a, an American ketchup and, you know, regular tomato sauce. So it's the same company and they tasted really different as well. Um, not really different. It's just a, it's ketchup seems a bit like thicker and stuff like that. Um, it's been a while since I tasted, but I do remember it tasting a little bit different. Well, um, here in America, you can get into a lengthy discussion on um, <laughs> salad dressing versus mayonnaise, which ketchup you actually like, Heinz. <laughs> Punch, you know, and, and here at, when my husband and I were dating, a couple of the questions, a couple of things we went through were, are you a mayonnaise <laughs> or a Miracle Whip? Because Miracle Whip salad dressing here. Um, points for being a Miracle Whip person, but bigger points for preferring mustard. Um, yeah, I love yeah. mustard. And we had the ketchup discussion. It's really funny about you know and are you a french dressing do you like catalina all these little things that we don't think about yeah. but we're both older so um because i'm 56 and we we married we've been together just about six and a half years now so <laughs> he was like my 50th birthday present <laughs> i love it i love it um let's see if anybody so nathan has a really good question for you mm -hmm. how Hello, does nathan. your how does your past journey and everything you overcame play a part in your magic? I know you touched on that a little bit. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, it's partly because of my belief system and also, you know, what I've been through. My magic just really focuses on me, um, not in like that selfish way, but just like um, me being the best that I can to take um, advantage of the opportunities that come my way rather than like, necessarily trying to manifest specific things if that makes sense um, and a lot of it is also just focusing for me um, learning how to focus on certain things that's been a big part of my practice because I think 
with alcohol, I was always avoiding things. <laughs> um, so magic and intention setting is very much about, yeah, focusing so that I can take advantage of what comes my way. I hope that very makes good. It, it makes yeah. sense to me. I'll, I'll see if Nathan has a chance to, to post in there. Um, something popped in my head and then it went away. Oh, it's a stupid question. I love it's, stupid questions. Is, are the Johnsons still a TV show there? I, I think it was a New Zealand show about five brothers who were all um, Norse deity. I've never heard of it, so I don't oh, know. Which, the little girl from Whale Rider. I don't know what uh, that is either. Oh, I'm you've got to watch. No, watch <laughs> Whale Rider. It's one of the best movies okay. I've ever seen. But it's okay. a really fun show, and it's very um, – here in America, when they play it, Here's how the dialogue goes. Hey, what the bleep 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 you doing? <laughs> well, I bleep 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 you bleep 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 bleep. I mean, they just bleep, <laughs> they buzz out all the words. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Karina says she loves that. Oh, and somebody else said it is canceled. Darn it! I love that. They were very cute. Um, is there an afterlife in your belief system? Ah, <sighs> um. No, I kind of want there to be, but I don't know. I just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, I guess I'm very pantheistic in how I see the universe. And I think, I don't know, I was trying to think of a way to describe this, but I'll give it a go. Let's see how I go. I kind of think of us as like little thought patterns in the big brain of the universe. Like if the bra- if the universe kind of wonders what would happen if such and such, we are that thought. Um, so not necessarily, you know, the universe wonders what happens so it moves a little pawn in place, but we are actually that thought. Um, and our purpose, I think, is to learn and to add to the overall experience of the universe. Um, so I think we don't continue as ourselves, as individuals. Um, but I do think that we leave our impression, um, our experience and what we've learned, you know, adds to the universe. So I think, yeah, we leave we leave that. And I think people can tap into that in the future um, because it's all one big thing to me. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of how I see it. Does that make any sense? It's stinking beautiful is what it is. It makes <laughs> such sense to me. Yeah, like um, I want there to be an afterlife because, you know, that li- little ego part of me doesn't want to die. You know, I'm scared of that. I am. But at the same time, yeah, I think I think that idea of, you know, being being one little tiny part of this big universe is kind of beautiful too. So It's it's yeah. wonderful. I, as a child, I was completely and utterly warped for a life by Horton Hears a Who. That's and- a Dr. Zeus, yeah? It is a Dr. Seuss and it's about an elephant type creature who finds a dandelion and he's wandering around with it. And because he has big ears, he hears a voice. Oh, that's beautiful. And there's an entire universe world on the dandelion. And at the very end, they cut back from Horton, back, 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 until you see And he's that, in one too? Yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. And so I've always thought, Mm. that's what I, that's where I'm living that's how I'm living I'm I'm part of a world there's part of worlds under me there's worlds around yeah. me just that whole encapsulation of self I love it I love um, it uh, somebody Science said they, they love how honest and articulate you are about oh. therapeutic and he- tarot as a therapeutic and healing tool thank you I try I don't know that I'm always articulate but I try <laughs> thank you <laughs> But I'm sorry, Katie, I interrupted you. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I was just going to say science fiction. Um, I, I'm a big science fiction fan, and I think science fiction has been pretty influential for me in my spiritual practice. Um, have you ever seen Babylon 5? It was like a big thing in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and how the Len talks about the universe. She says things like, we are the universe made manifest trying to figure itself out. That sort of stuff is like my Bible. I just, I love it. I, I totally yeah. agree with you. And she was one of my favorite characters because she was so, mm. at times she was removed and at times she was like right in your face. I liked the, yeah. the dichotomy they built for her character because I'm a writer 
And so I like yes. to look back at these things and break them down. But Babylon 5 was brilliant writing. It was. It was. It was amazing. I love it. Now, we have already gotten to deserted island time. You okay. got five. You get fixing to get dumped on a deserted island. You got five tools you can take with you. What do you take? Oh. Um. I think you said that a pen and a paper is one thing, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> that okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to stress out a little bit. Um, uh, can I take two decks? I would take the Gill Tarot, which is my life, and the Dreamtime Reading Cards, which is an Oracle deck by Laura Bowen, which is those two things are my favourite things in the world. Wait, the um, Dreamtime, the dream time, the round ones? Dreamtime reading cards. No, I have those as well. Okay. Um, Dreamtime reading cards is um, by Laura Bowen and it's published by Rockpool. And I just think it's the bee's knees, really. <laughs> um, yeah, so those two decks. And then I'm really into sound for ritual and stuff. So I take like a bell or something. Yeah. Um, so what's that? Four things. Mm -hmm. And then could I just take a book to read? I need a Absolutely. book of some kind. I'd probably take Meeting Fairies by R. Ogilvy Crombie. That's my favourite kind of kind of spiritual, but also, I don't know, it's just beautiful. Yeah, so those would be my five. Very yeah. cool. And at least yeah. you didn't, uh, was it Kellyanne or Alvine? One of the two, I can't remember who, but one of them said, I'll take an unending journal. I'm like, oh, oh that's, that's cheating. That's, that is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get those like thousand page journals. So I feel like that'd be that I have quite small writing. So there you go. And you might write in pencil so you can go back and you know erase Rub it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So what herbs seasonings? We'll just use seasoning because herbs mm -hmm. is locking people into a little small. What are uh, seasonings are must haves, just three, but must that you use in the kitchen and you use in your magical work? Okay, um, so I don't use a whole lot of herbs and stuff in my practice anymore. Um, I used to love, like, grinding up and making my own incense and stuff, but my hay fever's just gotten too bad for that. Me too. Um, but I used to really love things like cinnamon um, and basil. I have a little basil tree, like, plant. So, um, yeah, cinnamon, basil, salt, I guess. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know because I don't really do it that's, so much anymore. But that's perfect. Sediment, oh, that is three, isn't it? And yeah. salt, yeah, okay. yeah. And yeah. I think a lot of people didn't say salt because salt's the one I would say first. I'd say salt, pepper, and cinnamon right off the bat uh, would be three that I use back and forth all the time. Yeah. Um, now, powdered or rolled incense. Uh, powdered, you mean loose, yeah? Yeah, loose or um, like a stick or, like or a stick. comb. Yeah. Um, neither anymore. I can't do it. Um, so I use essential oils instead now. Just my nose. It's too. I just sneeze and cough the whole time now. <laughs> no, that makes sense. I love that because do you do diffusers or is that too much? I have a diffuser, um, which I do use sometimes. Otherwise, I'll just like anoint myself or my candle or something like that. Yeah. Or I create little sprays. Yeah, and that's when people, um, Witchy Bear, I, here it is, has a, um, this is from Sage and Salt, and it is Ooh. Smokeless Smudge. Yes, yes, that's basically what I use now instead of smudging myself so much. And it has sprays. a great, great smell. Let me see if I can get it back up there without knocking stuff down. <laughs> um, so... How do you intentionally care mm -hmm. or honor your deity if you have a deity that you work with in specific? Mm -hmm. um, so as I'm a pantheist, I don't really, you know, I work with deity differently, but I do, um, I've spoken quite a bit. I work with Lilith mostly, which is lots of fun. And I do, I kind of, when I'm working with her, I don't know, I create, make everything in honor of her. Um, but specifically I do things like I love reading out loud or talking out loud. Um, so I might read certain passages or maybe write a poem and read that out loud to her um, or eating an apple. That's a oh, big yeah. thing for me. Um, and masturbating for Lilith. 
that's a big one too. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. And yeah. there are people who work with, with sex magic and tantric sex magic, yeah. you know, and I've read about it. I've actually done it in the past. And I haven't done it recently. My husband mm. gets a little weirded out by the whole chanting, all, but, but, but yeah. you know, but the um, sending the energy to a specific mm. place because that's yeah. a huge energy that we're creating. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I know, absolutely. I don't do it so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, what do you do for self care of that pretty lady you see in the mirror every day? Ah, oh, I've gotten quite good at self care in the last few years. Um, I do a lot of stuff. Like I see a psychologist and I take meds. I think that's really important for me. But then other stuff, I'm so big into walking and bushwalking. Um, that's become massive for me in the last year or so. Um, and then painting my nails. I don't know. That's a thing for me now too. Um, and just spending time with the people that I love and reading, 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 that, reading. You know what? You, should, you said something at the very beginning about psychology and medicine mm. And I mm -hmm. cannot say enough how proud that makes me of you, if that matters in the world. But that's such a fucking important thing. Mm -hmm. I, I meet people who say, well, I became pagan and I gave up talk therapy. Mm. Well, no, there's, it there's a reason. Yeah. You know, I have a therapist, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, and if I didn't have a therapist, y'all, I'd be a completely different Arwen. It would not be the professional joy seeker. It'd be a lot more like Arwen, the evil bitch. Yeah, no, so, I would be very unwell. So that's really important for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 better living through chemistry. Yeah, yeah. I just figure so, my brain doesn't do quite the same things as everybody else, so I need a little bit of help, and that's totally okay. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. I actually am no longer on medicine, but I, I, with my therapist, have started replacing stuff with meditation and some other yeah. things that are working for me, but I'm pretty cautious about it. Because mm. I, I know what Arwen, you know, <laughs> off and Arwen on are, are different people. But so far, so good. Mm, mm. So now, name something that always brings you joy. I know you just talked about a whole bunch of your self-care stuff. Is there one in them that's really like, bing? No, I left this one off my self-care list. Um, so I could answer something different. Um, <laughs> See, people are practicing the questions. I must no, change I just, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I just kind of, you know, I kind of remembered some of the questions from some of the other interviews. So um, my parents have two poodles, two standard poodles. Um, and uh, my parents moved down to Melbourne um, a couple of years ago. So I walk them pretty much every day. And they're, they're just the most beautiful. And they know when I'm not doing so well and you know they come I'll, sometimes I stay at mom and dad's if I'm really not doing well and my partner's at work and Henry he'll come and like check on me um yes. he's just, they're just they're just the most beautiful things on the planet so those two those two dogs yeah I had standard poodles I had three in my life and uh I have a Basenji now but I I am a huge fan of standards mm. and strangely now I'm just going to ask you your dad's yep. not an ex-cop, right? No. Okay. Because I happen to know a cop and his wife that live near Brisbane okay. who have standards. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. Dad, are you Ken's daughter? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. Standard poodles. We've had a lot of dogs. We've all, I'm a big dog person. Um, but standard poodles, they're so intelligent, but they're like emotionally intelligent. They're emotionally connected to you in a way that other dogs just haven't been. They're just... I don't know. They're so clued in. They are. My, um, I had uh, Crouton, Casanova, and Quigley. Casanova stayed with my ex when my husband and I divorced. Casanova had bonded to him, so he stayed. But Crouton, my first, was uh, the most amazing standard poodle. I've, I, out of all three, he was the, mm. the best of the three. But I had a friend come over, and her partner had MS and was having a flare-up. Well, we let yeah. the dog in, and he was usually just, you know, typical standard poodle. Yay, people! But, yeah. Right? But he came in, and he came bounding in the door and then just stopped. Yeah. Walked over to her partner and said hello in his normal way, and then he stepped exceptionally carefully 
past the partner who was having the MS flare up and laid down next to her. And we were all like, yeah. what the? But he was an amazing dog. Um, he was killed by a pit bull, unfortunately. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, it's taken me a long time not to just hate pit bulls in general. Yeah. <laughs> so I've gotten, I've gotten past that. But it was really, it was traumatic because he was my, my soul dog, I guess, if you want, I mean, if you can have one. That, he was my soul dog. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I just made all the joy go out of the room because I talked about my dog getting killed. Sorry, people. No, but I think <laughs> it's beautiful how connected you were to that dog and how sensitive it was. Yeah. He was, a, he was an amazing dog. I'll have to post pictures of him. Or actually, if you Google Pride Poodle. Mm-hmm you'll actually come up with his picture because we used it. to, we used to groom him and do um, decorative art for him for gay pride. <laughs> so That's awesome. My dogs looked, are all over. Now what color Sorry? are you? Brown and black, right? I think I've seen them. No. Technically she's red. I'm um, Heidi. Um, but it's kind of like a, yeah, like a ready blonde sort of color. The red is. And then Henry's black, but he's getting a bit old. So he's got a bit of gray. But yeah, I, they're all over my Instagram and I did Vlogmas. Um, so they're all over that as well. Good. I'll have to go back and look some more because I love uh, the first time I saw a red standard, I, uh, I actually got online and started mm. Googling how to get one. I wanted yeah. one so badly. Um, I also wanted a Harlequin. I, there, there was a breeder in Texas that had black and white. Oh, yeah. Really Beautiful. snazzy. And for a groomer, when I was, I was thinking about doing grooming competitions. So, but I digress. We could, we could have a whole chat about talk about dogs all day. (laughs) Well, I'm an ex dog groomer. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I groomed for 13 and a half years. That's amazing. I would sneeze the whole time, but have a lot of fun. I actually (laughs) have animal allergies. So I stay, Yeah, I take an antihistamine before bed every night. Um, Yeah, me too. (laughs) Let's see. Poodle mixes are so, are the same. I have a Yorkie Poo who does the same for me. Crazy aware. Cool. Mm. So what's your favorite meal? Uh, um, of all time or now? I don't know if I could do all time. I'll do- <laughs> I, I think it's like, yeah, like what would be your favorite meal in this moment? <laughs> At the moment, I think I'm missing it because pomegranates have just gone out of season. Um, but we make this salad with like halloumi and red onion and pomegranate seeds. And I don't know, it's just, and like baby spinach leaves and, and almonds, just stuff. It's just the best thing on the planet and I'm going to miss it for six months. (laughs) Now, (laughs) what was the first ingredient? Uh, halloumi. Is that what it's a cheese? You like cook it a little bit and it goes all squeaky in your mouth. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Is it like a Greek cheese? um, I think, I don't really know, but it's, it's quite salty, but it's also squishy. Um, Yum. and yeah, you kind of cook it a little bit and it, it squeaks when you chew it. It's, it's delicious. Note to self, go during <clears throat> the palm granite season and go to Katie's house and stay yeah. there until she feeds you salad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I made it for Christmas. Um, and everybody loved it. It's so delicious. I'll just show up on your doorstep like this. <laughs> Bring the pomegranate <laughs> seeds and I'll make you my favorite salad. Yum. Now, yeah. here's ghost story time. If you have a ghost story, some people do, some people don't. Can you share it with us? Um, I've never had any experiences. Um, it's just, I don't know. Not, I think uh, one of my biggest fears ever since I was little was seeing a ghost. Um, like I used to, as soon as I turned the lights out, like keep my eyes shut the whole time. Um, but my mum does see ghosts. And we moved, when we moved to town, so we lived in this really old house um, and it was called the rectory because, like, a priest used to live there. Oh, cool. um, but in the war, in the war, a lot of houses in Townsville were kind of, you know, made into hospital places to look after soldiers. Um, and not long after we moved there, mum, like, every night for a while she would wake up and at the end of her bed would be, like, this wounded soldier just kind of looking at her. And she said she always felt really safe and protected with him. But, yeah, so I was a little bit creeped out, though, because I'm like, oh, my God, there's a ghost in our house. Please don't come and see me. I don't want to see you. I freak and the fuck out. I think we can set our filters up for that, you know, because it, yeah. it, it's possible. I'm a past mm. life believer, so it's possible you were a seer or a worker in the past and 
just it's like you know what i am so done with that i do done. not want to have that i want to have a, a this plane experience i want to see the bush i want to see the animals i want to mm. be here <laughs> i think um i just ever since i was little i haven't had the strongest grasp on reality <laughs> like i'm a uh, you know i've i've had psychotic breaks and stuff so i don't know like i just that sort of stuff isn't where i'm at like i don't chase those sort of experience or or super like you know, transcendental sort of experiences. I'm more about the earth and grounding myself and, yeah. I think so. that's very cool and I love the authenticity, you know. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm learning with meditation is the now moment. Yeah. You know, and it's very difficult to stay in the now because, mm -hmm. I mean, right now I'm talking to Katie. I'm sitting yeah. in my chair. I'm not thinking about the interview I did with Nathan before or the interview I'm doing with Root coming up. I'm thinking about here, but there, look, I just did a past future thing. It's hard. It's, it's like somebody it is, says, yeah. don't think of vanilla ice cream. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, so the last question, I can't believe we're at the last already. My goodness. Yeah. What is your best advice to someone starting out on their own path? What would you tell them? Um, I think just follow whatever makes you move, whatever moves you, um, and chase that and make space for it in your life. Um, and I think, too, I think I got this out of Meeting Fairies by R. Ogilvy Crombie, and it's always stuck with me. Um, basically he's having this really interesting, powerful experience and he sees a fawn in the garden and he starts going, oh, is it real? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. And then he's just kind of like, hold up, hold up. This is an amazing experience. Let me just be here and I'll, I'll analyze it later. But right now I'm just going to experience it and not question it. I don't know. That's been a big thing for me um, is not overthinking stuff and just allowing it and enjoying it. Um, and, yeah, that's that would be mine. That's amazing. And I really love the phrase. I loved all of it, but I love to jump on like one space. And when you said create space for it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you've yeah. got to, and you've got to learn to let go of other stuff because we have really crowded lives, y'all. <laughs> really, yeah. really crowded lives. So we have to make space for those other things that we want to learn and put away some things, maybe not forever, but mm. put them away Yeah. and focus on this in the now. And I love that. I'm going to have to get that book. I don't think I've read it. And read because I love of the idea. Of, now. Of course. It's a, but you can, I think, I don't know if it's all of it, but a big chunk of it is on YouTube. Like someone's read it out loud. I don't know if it's him or not, but I don't know. It's just the most beautiful book. Um, it kind cool. of reads like a bit like a fairy tale, but it's with his experience. Um, and I just, I just adore it so much. I have two copies because <laughs> I found them in like um, secondhand bookshops and like nearly squealed. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we get offline, if you'll send me the name through um, Messenger, so I can yeah. have it right, and I'll do, I'll look so I can see I can find my copy, find myself a mm. copy, because I yeah. love. Um, I grew up with a mom who loved fairy tales, so she would. My grandmother would get me. Um, they were called the red book of fairy tales the blue book uh, the yellow book and i have like i think the green the purple and the red now and I, i'm still working on getting the rest of them they're so old yeah you know yeah i think probably... it was also it was also published as the gentleman and the fawn i think um so it might be either of those two but yeah it's a beautiful beautiful book awesome i'm actually uh -huh. reading a biography of him right now very cool. Maybe you could do a video about him and share some. Ooh, I'll become a little R. Ogilvy Crombie fangirl. Yeah. I like it. Well, <laughs> I'm definitely a Katie Flowers fangirl. So thank you Aww. so much for all the great videos you do and the authentic voice you give to us. That that you don't hold back when stuff's crappy. You're like, mm, here. And I like that. Yeah. Now, when I say goodbye, you know, I say seek joy, y'all. How do you end your videos? Um, I say much love. Bye. And seek joy, y'all. Bye-bye. And I've got another interview coming up top of the hour, so stick around.